Good evening. We're working with the Chicago Department of Public Health, CDPH, to help combat lead poisoning in children. So let me take a moment and describe what lead poisoning is. Old homes have lead paint on the walls. Lead paint makes lead dust. Little kids crawl around on the floor and either inhale the dust or they get it by putting their hands in their mouths. Uh, there's no safe level of lead exposure. Lead exposed kids, they can take serious IQ hits, they can have abnormal neurological development, and this can lead to problems, especially with violence later on in life. So it's a problem. CDPH asked us to come in specifically because the policies that they have right now for dealing with lead exposure are purely reactive. A child has to show up with lead poisoning, and then CDPH can go and check out the home, find a hazard, and then work on fixing it. So our goal is to change this into a proactive process where CDPH can identify lead hazards before a child gets poisoned. Go in, fix it, keep kids healthy. So we started by taking a whole bunch of data. CDPH uh, gave us their home inspection records going back about 20 years. We've got medical records for all kids who have had lead tests. We've got Cook County assessor data for more information on buildings. And then we've also got the 2010 census data for sociodemographic information in Chicago. We took all of this data and we dumped it into a suite of predictive models. We produced a lead risk score for every home in Chicago. Now, you could say, well, you don't really need a predictive model for this. I mean, lead paint, for example, was banned in 1978. So you could just take all the houses in Chicago, pre-1978, and start inspecting them at random. You can do that, but that leaves you with a pretty big problem space. This map, every red dot, is a pre-1978 home. That's 200,000 inspections CDPH you need to make. With the current resources CDPH has now, that would take 76 years, it would cost about $100 million. Compare that with the output of our model. We bring that number down to just over 40,000. We took 60 years off of uh, the expected timeline, and it's about a fifth of the total budget. Having said that, this model is still really conservative. The reason why is that we don't yet know where expectant mothers and young children are currently living. That's data that we're hoping to get soon. We don't have it yet. So what we had to do is assume the worst, and in that every house in Chicago, there's a two-year-old crawling around on the floor. Obviously, that's not the case, but to play it safe, that's what we did. That's why these numbers are still pretty high. Once we get that location data for expectant mothers and young children, our model forecasts that we can bring this number down to 378 buildings. This will take CDPH two months to cover. It'll cost just under $200,000. Compare that with $100 million in almost 80 years we're calling this a data science success story. <laughs> Having said that, home inspection is still costly and time consuming. So I want to leave you with, with one extra approach that we've been looking at, which is to focus on identifying at-risk children instead of at-risk homes. So basically, kids in their early year, their first year basically, before they can crawl around, their lead risk profiles look essentially the same. It's in this key window from year one to year two that we see these profiles really differentiate, and they stay that way throughout childhood. So the power of this new model is the ability to identify which risk profile a child fits into from day one at birth. And in doing so, we can then go and start educational programs, prevention, and remediation to stop the potential poisoning hazard from ever getting started in the first place. And we think that combining this risk model for houses and this risk model for children has the, has the potential to really be groundbreaking in the way that lead poisoning is combated in Chicago and beyond. Uh, we've had a great time working with the Chicago, Chicago Department of Public Health on this, but we also hope that we've shown data science can and should have an important place in public health policy everywhere. Thank you.